the peak of these uh, spontaneous hippie fads in Kathmandu are the full moon parties on the slopes of Swang Bunath. Outside of town a little bit, yeah. Mass saturation, acid tripping. And that's when some exalted freak hands me the translation of the secret of the golden flower. Wow, my Charles Wilhelm. Yeah, his translation. I'm totally tripping and fully participating, celebrating in the full moon party. And I'm just saying, this hand-to-hand -hand gift, wow, uh, stuns me. The Eastern wisdom in the book, Unfathomable, yeah, profound. Oh, there's my hippie friend Larry with his golden trumpet, oh, blasting out in the full moon. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Enthralling hundreds of trappers on the hillside. We earth freaks, we're high on the roof of the world <laughs> in more ways than one, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is our golden peak. Uh, we're certain we can manifest peace and love around the planet. No more hunger. No more war. <sighs> wow. What a majestic spiritual view from these Himalayan peaks. Well, while tripping on powerful LSD in Kathmandu in 1969, surrounded by adventurous, mystical, acid-tripping energy mates. <laughs> yeah, we're vibing together. Uh, there's no, no future imaginable except peace and love. I mean, take a deep hit on the chillum pipe. Get a big puff of hashish in your lungs. Pass it along to your neighbor. During this season, uh, Eddie remains a magnet for flip-outs. Uh, Carl, dim-witted, shadows Eddie emotionally, physically, and uh, then there's Bridgette, too, French Bridgette. I mean, Eddie's looking out his window from the dormitory on Freak Street, and there is Bridgette wearing a long Afghani fur coat. Hmm. She walks regally across the street in front of a few Nepali guys who are silently following her. Bridget swirls around to face them and gives them what they want. She opens her fur coat, stark naked underneath. No. The Nepali guys pretend to shield their eyes from this living goddess, adult living goddess. Not like that youngster they bring out once a year in the poly girl and pray around town. Uh, yeah, French body. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> Carl comes into the Link Kazar. Uh, he's, he's out of it. Uh, extremely upset. Why? He lost all his money, uh, passport, and clothes? Yeah, uh, he was going to take a swim by the Swinebunath River. Looks so cool and refreshing. As soon as he got in, he got swept downstream. <laughs> I lost everything. Carl, having a meltdown. Eddie uh, signals to uh, Tibetan Joe, bring two chais over. Mm. This is Eddie's fourth time in Nepal. By this time, he's become freak idol. Yeah, and uh, he's, surra he's surrounded by his loyal friends for the next 41 years in Asia. Eddie invites uh, Brigitte to visit him, and so here she is strolling around naked in the uh, common dormitory room, uh, speaking to herself in French, other hippies. Mm. And keeping a lazy eye on her, uh, watchful. Mm -hmm. Now when Bridget walks out in the street, she swings a metal bar. That's the Nepali guys who follow her around. Yeah. 
Well, she finishes her French soliloquy, sits on the bed next to Eddie, and uh, rubs her naked body uh, with a mango. Juicy, slurpy <laughs> mango juice. And she says, Eddie, I thought I wasn't in an ashram, but I'm in a prison. Help me escape. Well, um, Eddie tries to get her to eat something. After Bridget eats something, she just simply throws her dishes over her shoulder and they crash against the wall behind her. <sighs> the sympathetic Nepali family uh, scoops up the pieces and puts the broken dishes on Eddie's tab. Yeah. Well, more happy characters appear, disappear in the hashish cafe society as Kathmandu. Uh, Black Jim comes on the scene. Then there's Bridget, Carl, Black Jim. Oh. Discharge fighter pilot from the Vietnam War. Gone mad. Black Jim. Freaking around Kathmandu. And he is extremely violent. <laughs>